Jaguar Land Rover has been a real, it's been one of the few success stories in the, the gloom of the last couple of years, 18 months or so. Um, some terrific export figures. How have you managed to achieve that? Well, we had a global footprint anyway, um, but I think the most important uh, factor was through the recession, we continued to invest in our product. So we knew that at some stage we'd come out of the recession. We weren't sure when, clearly. But by keeping our product investment going, it meant that when we came out of the recession around the world, not only here in the UK, we had a product offering to, to offer to our customers and new customers. Of course, it meant we had to make some pretty tough decisions to offset protecting the product investment. Um, it made us a much fitter leader company, um, which we've benefited from. Uh, we've worked very closely with our supplier base and with our dealers you know, through, through those, those difficult times. Um, but it's all about product in our business, and it's about design and, and offering the customer the right product at the right time. And, and as you say, our, our figures have improved significantly, uh, and that's because they like the product. And, and the product itself, you know, it's a high-end product. It's not you know, middle or bottom end of the market. From an observer's point of view, it's a high-end product. That market's clearly still spending money. Well, it's a pre we, we operate in the premium and the luxury market with, with both the Land Rover business and the Jaguar business. Um, now, around the world, you know, the segments vary quite considerably. Three quarters of our business comes from outside of the UK. So 75% of our revenue this, this year, that is, that's about £8 billion, will come from outside markets like the US, markets like Europe, Germany. Uh, and increasingly emerging markets, so Brazil and, of course, China. And their premium markets and their luxury segments are actually growing at quite a fast rate. So we're benefiting from that. Uh, we're increasing our market share as well in those segments. Here in the UK, uh, it, it has been pretty stable. Um, we operate in a, in a, in a broader mix of, of the marketplace. Um, we have products that are not really expensive. They're, they're good value for money in, in their segments. And they've, they've had some resonance as well. So I think it's a combination of having a good global footprint combined with the right offering for the right segment. And with three quarters of your income coming from export sales, you must watch the currency like an absolute hawk because at some point things are going to change. What's, what's the plan then? Well, we do watch currency very, very closely. But, you know, the DNA of Jaguar Land Rover is we've always been an exporting business. Mm. Um, so, as long as you, you're clear about, you don't take windfall from currency, you actually make sure that, the, the, that you watch the currency and you set your cost base and you set your margins and you set your trading around the world at, the, at, a, at a, a reasonable exchange rate, you should be immune to those factors. So, uh, we spend a lot of time in the business making sure that the fundamentals of the business are right. We're not just being successful because of the exchange rate. And the future, in terms of keeping the product fresh and, and, and new things on the horizon, what have you got up your sleeve? Um, well, we've, 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 we've been quite open that we've got the most ambitious plan that we've ever had as a company uh, over the next five years. We're going to we want to grow our geographic footprint even more, uh, and we want to go we want to go into newer segments where there's there is more volume. Um, so over the next five years, we're going to spend at least a billion pounds a year, and some, some years even more than that, on product and investment in R&D. Um, a large proportion of that will be, will be here in the UK. Um, and we, uh, we're, we're going to be announcing something like 40 products over the next five years. I'm not going to tell you what they are. but um, uh, So a lot of product, because at the end of the day, our DNA is the product. And if we don't have that product coming out on a regular basis, particularly in the premium segment, customers uh, lose interest. Um, but the other thing, coming back to the UK and the investment, I'd, I'd just like to mention is, you know, the, it's not just about um, manufacturing, it's about engineering and it's about design. And we're working very closely with universities like Warwick University uh, and other, other, other universities in making sure that the research, the innovation, and the technology investment is done here in the UK. And that is, is strategically really important because if you haven't got that conveyor belt of innovation going, you, you're going to run out in terms of uh, product innovation later in the day. So a lot of that investment is going to be spent 
here in the UK generating that new innovation. 